speaker with him? Five seconds. The speaker isn't with him. Oh, right. To WSTU, Stewart. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the program host and guests and are not necessarily those of this station, management, staff, and sponsors. WSTU does not endorse products that may be mentioned. Any reproduction or retransmission of this broadcast is strict. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. It's the Crown Car Care Radio Hour, and we have, I believe, 23 days until Christmas. But who's counting? I am. <laughs> oh, okay. It's getting close. Yes. And now we're this close. Advent's happening. If, you, if you're a Christian and you go to church, light up the light, light candles, candles. Mm -hmm. this weekend. Mm -hmm. And then the 25th is the magic day we celebrate of the birth of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then a week later, New Year's. Yeah. It's always nice you get time off from yes. your work. Yes. We have one day off. Yeah. yeah. In the service industry, you, yeah. it's just we fix cars. I know. I, know. I tell so. folks I don't even get time off for good behavior. Well, I'll tell you this. We have two shops in, in Martin County. Mm -hmm. We have one over there in Palm City and, and one uh, in, off Cove Road. Yes. And uh, we've been there for 14 years. And we have a radio show that we do every week. My name is Todd Harris, and uh, my co-partner here is Frank Mezzapella. And uh, we've been doing this for, gosh, I believe it, about a year yet. Yeah. We've been yeah. doing it a while. Mm -hmm. And we have a great show in store. We're going to be offering podcasts of our show. So you'll be able to get it uh, on an Apple download or, or Android phone. I don't know how that works. But I know with Apple, they have podcasts. Yeah. And we'll have those available, all of our shows. There'll be a little summary on each show so you can do a search if you want to find out about a topic. Mm -hmm. This week, we have a broad range of topics. We'll talk a little bit about some news that's in the automotive industry. Right. We'll talk about uh, three products from Lucas that we sell at our uh, Palm City location. And then we're going to do a glass test. If everything plays out and my glass arrives with some uh, towels, we're going to do a contest for Grout's Garage Glass Cleaner Ultra Premium against this brand new cleaner called Meguiar's Perfect Clarity. And I'll give you some information about mm. Perfect Clarity. And we'll see what happens. So. I like it. We're also going to talk about uh, two vehicles that we've had in our shop the last week. Some interesting stories on that. We'll talk about um, each week from now we're going to start having famous leaders of the world. A little bit about them and some things that they've said that maybe are relevant to the world today. And we'll talk about wellness checks. We'll talk about a new car. A new car out there, the Hyundai Telluride and the Kia. Uh, no, the Hyundai Palisade and the, and the Kia Telluride. Great full-size uh, SUV holds up eight passengers. We'll do a little discussion on that. Short of that, let's get right into the All news. Right. You have any uh, news for me, Frank? We do. We've got uh, the brand new uh, CEO of Ford is uh, Jim uh, Hackett. Okay. And he said he's in it for the long haul to steer Ford's turnaround. In an exclusive interview, the CEO says he has unfrozen parts of the automaker that were stalled when he took over in 2017. I didn't know that they had a turnaround needed. Apparently. It's news to me, or is, he, is this good all, all talk to boost his uh, entry? I think he's talking about Wall Street. Oh. Okay, think, for yeah. stock price. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, when he took over in 2017, he's seen a dramatic improvement in the business, even if Wall Street isn't yet on the same page. Sometimes if you're just doing average returns, mm -hmm. Sometimes Wall Street doesn't like that. Yeah. They like excitement. Yes. They like Swings, because how place. does Wall Street make their money? Yeah. Tra on the, trading on the buy and has sell. no bearing whether it does good or not. Right. Right? Performance. Yeah. It, it has nothing to do with performance. Yeah. It has all to do with how many commissions they can get. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It has nothing to do with performance. Yep. But we want performance. Oh, yeah. Ford has some performance vehicles, too. They do. They've got that new Shelby GT500. They've always had, they've got the GT350, mm -hmm. fabulous cars. They've got the F-150s, they've got the Super Duties. And we did a road test on that uh, Super Duty 6.7 a couple months ago. Yes. That, that, was a that was an excellent Good road show. test. Yes. Yes. All right. So let me give you some more news here. Jasper Engines, which we are a dealer for in transmissions, mm -hmm. fine uh, company. They're employee owned. They're the only company I know that offers rebuilt products for cars. 
for trucks that has the type of warranty that's out there and the breadth of their follow-up and um, what they just do in service is fabulous. It reminds me of Crown Car Care. Mm -hmm. Let me talk about one of these new engines that they have. The industry, this 3.5 Ford Duratec motor, which is the same motor that is turbocharged in that new Ford GT, mm -hmm. as well as the Raptor, as well as some of the F-150s that have turbochargers. Well, they've developed a process for this 3.5 Duratec that allows them to put their name on it and offer it to the general public. One of the problems with newer motors that have overhead cams is, is there's no bearings on the journals. There's a, it's a, it's a smooth bore with just the aluminum and the cam rotating in it. So if you have any type of motor damage, it's very difficult to rebuild these. So Jasper now offers it because they developed a process. They bought a multi-million dollar CNC machine that line bores the bores in perfect, you know, perfect alignment. So when they put a cam that has had spray welding and reground on it, they can make it like new and, and, and they're able to use the cores as well as other motors to develop a product that's sellable. The problem is most small time engine rebuilders and sometimes the manufacturers are not going to the length of, of, of durability as well as precision that they do when they make them new. And they're able to do that with this new process and they're the only one in the industry that does it. It's kind of like the interior version of fit and finish. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's, yeah. it's and I, I talk about this easily, but let me tell you the, the, concept that I'm speaking of is very critical in our industry and if you're not aware of it you might if you don't go to Crown Car Care and you go to a place or and you're, you know say you're on vacation somewhere and your vehicle breaks down and you have to put a, a transmission or an engine in it you got to watch what product they're selling you right. you really do they're not all the same no they're not and you might want to research it Jasper is, is, is a fine product and we put our name on it and that's why we offer it so, nice Jasper that was some new interesting news. Yeah. I have some other interesting news mm -hmm. here, too. I've got some other stuff. Let me get this. Uh, let me see here. While you're looking at that, I just want to mention to our listeners that Ford is recalling F-150s because of loose cable can cause stalling or fires. Ooh. This is uh, out of Dearborn, Michigan. Ford is recalling 168,000 F-150 pickup trucks in North America to fix an electrical problem that could cause engine stalling or fires. So well, there's another issue. There's F-150s mm -hmm. and it's, there's reports out there and this is not one, that's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. They have spontaneous dash fires. Oof. Customer might have it happen to his. Spontaneous. It completely burned the, burned the vehicle down the ground. Oh, I, I grabbed this. So, wow. Sure. I have Maybe some news that I would like to share. Sure, go ahead. Okay, well, in 1989, there was a Santa. couple from Long Thanks Island. Thanks for calling. Stand by, all right? Hold on a minute. We've got okay, an important phone call. I believe it's from the North Pole. Hold that news, yeah, Tamara. Okay, I yeah. will. All right. Tamara, you want to get that phone call, please? Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Call will be on and you can talk. Hello. Okay. Hello. Hello. Caller? There you go. Hey. Oh, it is. And and my wife Tamara's here. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, if I think this is Santa Claus, if I'm not mistaken, gosh, I... <laughs> well, I, I hope, did you get my list I sent this year? <laughs> I know. You're the only one that would know that, too. No one else knows. Is Todd on the nice list this year? <laughs> oh, well, 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 wait a minute. Well, I believe you're in store for some cold weather this December, and I think it's going to be fun for you in that sled you fly around in. That thing must go really fast. Oh, boy. Oh, we've been wondering how that works. We, we did a show last year on it, and that answers all the questions. Yes. Wow, that baby will go fast. There you go. Hopefully it doesn't. I, I wouldn't want to smell the exhaust, though. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> 
Oh boy. Uh, wow. All right. <laughs> Very good. So, uh, so uh, anyways, uh, so everything's going well for you up at the North Pole and you're all ready. To, you, you and the elves are getting everything ready for all the good little boys and girls, right? Mm. <laughs> well, we've also heard at this radio station here that there's two elves here. What are their names? Uh, the, the Greg and uh, uh, Carol. Carol. We've got Carol. Two, we've got Christmas Carol, the elf that that has been seen around the station before. Yes, so, yes, indeed. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, I bet you do. Oh. <laughs> I know my elf. He every night he goes away. Yeah, every night he, he goes away. To you. <laughs> yep. That's right. That's right. Report in. <laughs> All right. That's great. Hey, well, we want to thank you for calling in, Santa, and we look forward to visiting with you as we get closer to Christmas. Good advice. All right. Thanks, Santa. Thanks, Santa. Bye bye. Well, I didn't reckon that Tamara, my wife, had come in when we just had started the show. And welcome aboard, Tamara. It's so yeah. glad to have you here. And why don't you, you were continue, you were oh, had some news um, going on, yes. but we were interrupted by Santa, and yes. it was a great interruption. This story was in my news feed today, and I found it very interesting. So this couple, um, they bought a unclaimed storage unit in one of those auctions for $100 back in 1989. Yes. And they, when they opened it, what did they find? They saw a 1976 Lotus Esprit sports car. I know, you know what that, that is. is? Yes. yes. Well, it turns out when they like loaded it up to take it somewhere, they like truckers were were radioing them and telling them like this was the car from the James Bond movie. Yes. One of the James Bond movies, which it turned out to be. It was the original one? It was the original one. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, that, in that movie they also they had a, a model of one that did went underwater. Yeah, the wheels. Yes. Oh, so, I love that. that so was... they had this, they, you know, they did some work on it to restore it and they kept it. And um, then they had it verified and everything that it was that car. And they put it up for auction. And guess oh. how much it went for? Who bought guess it? who bought it? <laughs> Todd now knows. I, I gave him the uh. Well, it went for just about a million dollars. I think it was nine hundred and ninety-seven thousand dollars. Yes. Yes. Just under a million dollars. Mm -hmm. It went to somebody who doesn't drive gasoline-powered vehicles. Mm. Elon Musk bought the car. Yes, but when I look at the picture of the car, <laughs> it reminds me of the Tesla truck. Yeah. Yes, I was going to say that he got the, the look of that car. Yes, that was that must have been his inspiration for that truck because it really looks like it. Mm -hmm. Here's a so short story about the Lotus. My second job out of college, I graduated from the University of Illinois in 1986. I took a job at Motor Works of Barrington. It was a sales job, and I sold cars. The lineup of cars included the Lotus Turbo. Ooh. And I never sold one, but I've driven them quite a bit. And there was one, I read one in the showroom that was there for sale. Mm. And it was, well, it was gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. And I've driven them. Uh -huh. It's a four cylinder turbocharged. Four cylinder? Turbocharged. I didn't know. Mid engine. Uh huh. GM, a lot of GM in it. Yeah. General Motors. Mm -hmm. Great car. Tubular chassis. Didn't have a frame. It was a, a tubular frame. Wow. Uh, fiberglass body. Well, that makes sense because of the... Well, some of it was fiberglass. Some of it was metal, but it was a lot of fiberglass. Yeah. And the interior had a, a glove-soft type tan leather in it that 
had this odor of like leather that just emanated from the car when the windows were down. And you know, it was in our showroom. Wow. And you could just smell it when you first walked in, when no one's in the showroom, you could smell the interior of that Lotus. Oh. And I've driven a couple of them. I drove, you know, new ones that were mm -hmm. for sale there. I can't remember what the price was. I'm guessing it was like 80,000, 60 to 80,000, I believe, yeah. was the original price. Starter. We didn't sell it. Huh? We didn't sell a whole bunch of no. them, but we were a dealer for them. So there you have it. That is very cool stuff. So. Excellent. One more bit of news, then we'll get right into the show. Okay. Here's something very, if, if you know diesels, and I know we have a lot of diesel people out here in Martin County, we fix a lot of your vehicles and we service them at both shops. In fact, we specialize in them. So if you have a diesel, whether it be a Cummings, a Duramax, or a Power Stroke, or a Mercedes Sprinter, sure think of us and, and put us in consideration if you're having any maintenance work done on there or you're having any problems. Mm -hmm. Both of my stores can work on the one in Cove Road and the one in Palm City. I suggest you call the 772-781-8000 number and we can get you in for an appointment. We can get you in in a hurry. If you have an emergency, please call us and we'll get you right in anyway. And but if you have a diesel. And the Cove Road store is going to be repowering the Ford that I have. Yeah, the van. And the the Ford van. truck. Yes. So we're looking forward to now, that. That led into this bit of news, which yes. is I'm building to, mm -hmm. is Dodge mm -hmm. made a, well, they made a Dodge Ram through the years that was the Cummings engine was available. And it, Cummings is an engine manufacturer, standalone. They don't make cars or trucks. They mm -hmm. sell power plants. They're very durable, very reliable. The following of the, the Cummings in the Dodge vehicles, the Dodge Rams, is huge because they're very reliable, good motors. One of the best motors was the 5.9 P-Pump injector, powered. The P-Pump was a, a nomenclature, the P7100, which was for Bosch. It was a mechanical mm -hmm. fuel injection that changed the game on drivability and, and smoothness of diesel engines. Prior to that, it wasn't quite as good. And it was all mechanically done. And now um, FCA, which, you know, is Fiat, Fiat. Mm -hmm. is offering, and they've never done this before, a rebuilt P-Pump uh, choice. And let me just read it here. Now available exclusively, exclusively through Mopar, you can buy a remanufactured 12-valve 5.9-liter engine complete with mechanical Bosch 7100 intended as a cost-effective, no-surprise solution to your older Ram workhorse back on to get it back on the road in active duty in a short order. Cummings remanufactures the 6BT mill. It should be a big hit. Now, see, Cummings is rebuilding it for FCA. FCA isn't touching it. So this is being built by the manufacturer of the motor. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a good quality piece. Each engine is backed by a two-year, 100,000-mile warranty. As for power ratings, they are available in 325 horsepower or 385 horsepower. So two different power choices. It'll be a big hit. Blocks are hard to find. There's, it's hard to get engines for this 5.9 P-Pump. And if you're in the diesel world, it's quite desirable. So this is a big, big bit of news. Mm -hmm. So A lot of people won't, you know, ring right but because you won't know it. But if you're in the diesel world, this is huge news. Okay. So, cool. Game changer, actually. And that's the P-Pump version of the 5.9, which is ah. second generation of 5.9. Very so, good. They right. offered them up through, I believe, 98, 1998, so it's a little bit older, but mm -hmm. remember these truck aficionados that like the diesels, they're really getting into these older OBS, old body style, they call it, OBS, okay. and old that's body. the nomenclature that these people <laughs> use, so if you ever see or read OBS truck, it's old body style. They're making a big hit mm. in, in regards to them wanting to fix them up and use them. Mm -hmm. It's a little different culture than the muscle car culture that we see so popular today with the fast cars of the 60s and 70s. Right. Well, with those, it's purely recreational. There's not a, much utilitarian value. But with these trucks, there's utilitarian value in regards to what you can do with it. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit better value. I don't know what else to say. You can do things with it other than just be cool and drive it fast. Yeah. Pulling, towing, whatever it is. It's power But there's a, yeah. things to do. Yeah. Other than just go to car shows and go fast, which is still fun. Right. But it's, there's no real utilitarian value. Mm. So, yeah. If that makes sense. Sure. So, how do those uh, work in extreme weather environments? 
Okay. Well, as if anything, I wanted a segue. No, so this is a good segue because mm -hmm. one of my topics here is in colder weather, mm -hmm. things are going to break more. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. Water pumps start to develop leaks because there's rubber seals. Oil starts to leak out of motors because the uh, the gaskets shrink. Remember, in cold weather, the molecules get closer together and denser. Like the air it, does. Air does. In warm weather, hot weather, just like the air, which expands more. That's why you can, on a cold day, you can smell the food from the food truck because the molecules are denser in the, com the combination of the, what makes up air, which is, if you didn't know, 75% nitrogen. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. not all oxygen. No, no. Uh, yeah, but when the molecules are close together, yeah. they can, the smell particles of the whatever you're smelling can cling to it closer. Yeah. So it's denser. Denser smell molecules create a stronger scent. Well, the same is with engine parts. They shrink, the molecules get closer, therefore the tolerance is slightly increased. You get an oil leak, you get a water leak, you get engine problems. And also, um, I've heard, and I'm not 100%, do you have any reporting on electricity on cars that somehow uh, seems to be affected? Do you have yeah, anything on that, Frank? I just happen to have something Perfect. on that. Um, where'd it go? Here it is. Do I have it? Yeah, probably wrong. Wrong. Well, you can give us just give us an executive summary or yeah, just what you've read. Right. So uh, about forty percent, if I recall correctly, efficiency is lost with electric vehicles. It's a big number. Yes, forty percent, because that includes the power needed for uh, the heater in the car, which yes, is a tremendous yes. amount of electricity that is mm -hmm. beyond belief. So, yeah. As well as the efficiencies of batteries decrease. Exponentially, as the weather gets co is colder, mm -hmm. I view this as a deal breaker for people that are looking at electric cars in colder climates. Yeah, completely deal breaker. I right. mean, you drop your mileage in half, your distance. That's huge. Yeah, so. exactly. Okay. Can I get back to the OBS old body style? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I just looked it up because I was curious, like what the old body styles look like, and I. They have a little definition here that came from somebody who was on a Ford enthusiast truck forum. And it says, old body style. The trucks like ours with vent windows. The good trucks, well, he must have been an interloper because he's saying the good trucks before Ford ruined them. The term also applies to the good Chevrolet GMCs with the vent windows. And he keeps saying vent windows. Do trucks yes. not have vent windows anymore? Most, no. most vehicles don't have vent windows mm -hmm. anymore. And they're the little window in the back. It was kind of, no, know? it was the oh. porter window in the front of the front door that you could open it and pivot it out. Oh, okay. They're really convenient and nice because you've got some air circulation without causing uh, kind of newer vehicles. If you open the window past, I think, a third, you get this deafening resonance that happens. Okay, Correct. I do remember Also, a lot of older vehicles didn't come with air conditioning. Yes. You see, you wanted to have the roll, windows rolled up, but sometimes you just needed fresh air blowing in somewhere. Do you know why? Good topic. Do you know why you get the deafening resonance when you open windows now? Why? Do tell. The air isn't escaping as fast. Exactly. They seal them up better. Yes. There, if you look on old cars, there was vents in all the doors and on the A pillar and B pillars, little plastic vents. Uh, that was actually, uh, if you took it off, there was a rubber membrane that flapped with an air and you'd like go out. Damper. Yes. Yes. Air left as quick as it got in. Now it doesn't get out. And it, it back feeds on itself. And yeah. that's what caused it. Just like when I was explaining mm -hmm. before the show about gravity. Yes. And th when, they can, when they hit, when the air can't get out, it bounces off the walls of the car inside and then comes back at what's coming in, which is the fresh air. Right. And that creates a resonant frequency, which then vibrates and causes an awful sound in your ear <laughs> that you can also feel. And you feel like the car is just not performing right. It's it's just just it sound gets bad. Oh, yeah. But that's the reason. Uh, the venting, there's no venting. All right. So very cool. If you didn't know that. All right. It's fabulous information. <laughs> well, let's take a break and then we'll come back and let's do two two studies of two cars that have been in my shop this week. All right. And we still want to do our glass test too. We got a glass test. We've got great leaders we're gonna talk about and then we'll all right. It's all so, fast stuff. Yes, all right. Stick with us, we've got much more. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. Let's do one hand. Yeah. 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 Y
You're going to do it. That's right. Good stuff, huh? I love that. Want me to do it right now? No. Well, I'm going to read about this glass cleaner first. Okay. This is a new product. It's on page 18, I think it is. Okay. It's on page 20. Look, did you stop and get this? Yeah, I, oh. I bought both of them. Oh. I just bought these at the advance. I don't know if I went in. They're the only ones that sell this. And they have an aerosol version too, but I can only get that. But interesting. Mm -hmm. What struck my fancy was this article on it, right? How are you, Frank? I am well. Good. Right. Did you have good. a good Thanksgiving? Yes, I did. Good. How about you? It was great. I treated my wife last night to leftover uh, turkey. Uh, chop suey. So turned it into turkey chop suey. Like it. Interesting. And is your wife a good cook? She is. Does she? Do you get a lot of Asian food? Uh, I love because I love, and I can only imagine having real authentic. Yes, yeah. The, the, the food that we eat in the Chinese yes. restaurants is the American notion mm. of what Chinese food is. Well, the funny thing is, is when I went to France a million years ago, I remember having Chinese food there, and it was totally different. It was right. so good. It was right. so different. It was probably closer to. It was probably be. the French notion of what Chinese yes. food is. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but it was better than it was here. Yes. And then one time, someplace I worked, well, um, there was a Vietnamese person that brought in, she made egg rolls for our office, mm -hmm. and or the Vietnamese rolls, and they were like unbelievable, like not what you get when you go somewhere and you get these rolls, you know, it was so delicious. Yeah, my wife makes these uh, dumplings too. Mm -hmm. So good. She prefers the steam, but my son and I, we like them. She Lightly fries them. Oh, yeah. So good. <clears throat> Ten seconds. Got to open it. Five seconds. I'm going to say three, two, one. Frank, I've got a question for you. All right. Welcome sure. back, everybody. Do you think in China, do they, at Thanksgiving, do they have turkey? Yeah, it's what do they eat over there? Well, it's not turkey. Uh, it's for some thing, kind and they don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Either. But do they ever eat turkey? In the, no, it's not. Yeah, but, that's do you? Yes. What do you do? I turn it into turkey chop suey. Well, tell us about it. So what happened? <laughs> what happened? You made some. I introduced it to my wife last night, and she thought it was... She was suitably impressed enough to where I think she wants to make her own authentic Chinese version. Do you know what turducken is? Yes, I do. <laughs> if you watch NFL, they'll uh, they kind of give you a little one-on-one -on -one primer on what turducken is. <laughs> it's a duck in, in turkey. It is. It's a, a turkey stuffed with a full-size duck. Yeah, that's <laughs> what it is. <laughs> yes. That's right. Yes. Well, All right. let me Thanks read about this us. new glass cleaner, mm -hmm. and we're going to do a live contest. Okay. McGuire's has come out with a new glass cleaner. You've heard me talk about how important it is to get the film off the inside of your glass. Well, we're having a live test today, and if you can catch it on our camera, you'll be able to see uh, the, mirror. the mirror here. Mm -hmm. And we're testing McGuire's brand new Perfect Clarity Glass Cleaner. They say it's the most superior in the marketplace. Okay. And then we're going to compare it to... Grouch, which is a high rated glass cleaner. Okay. So All I right. am cleaning one side. She is. Yeah. She it has a good smell. She's using a microfiber cloth for those of you that are watching Careful, on, don't cut on YouTube or uh, can see what we're doing here. But uh, yeah, so it's a very Let me thin take a look. piece of. Uh, Pretty good. Of mirror yeah, glass. It's not pretty, the best mirror. <laughs> no, but it's, it really right, cleans yeah, it. Yeah, okay, now let's yeah. try this grots or grouts. I'm going to do it on that side. Ooh. Okay, there you go. Give, give oh, this has a now, different this smell. This smells really good. Ooh. Wow. All right. That's gross. And it's much easier. Like the foam is much look? easier to wipe off. Too. Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. As of our highly unscientific test, I believe we have a winner. Okay. Guess what? But. They look the same. <laughs> <laughs> but performance yes, wise, performance was excellent. On but how did it when you cleaned it? Did it have a different? Yeah, easier to clean. The foam I liked better. 
that definitely. Okay, this is Grout's. It, now, it was a smoother clean. Grout's Garage. And it had a better a, scent. Has a premium line of wax. And mm -hmm. then this was Meguiar's, their brand new Perfect Clarity. They offer it in a spray bottle and an aerosol. I could only get the bottle. So it's a slightly irregular test, but it is good data. Yeah. Yeah. It's which uh, smells better. I think rules the grots. Well, the um, then I smell the um, ammonia. You do. This one has a fragrance too. Yes, if you don't want much of a fragrance, then you would go. It doesn't really smell. Oh, that has a sweet smell. Yes, it does. Here, yeah, a little bit it does. Here. Yeah, and then more fruity tooty. Fruity. Smell <laughs> yeah. Let's smell that. Go in there. Smell the rain. Well, the real test will be. Oh, and your makeup mirror. Yes. Yeah, All right, so that's the acid too. test. There so. Big thing for me is the clean glass. If you want to make your windows the cleanest they can be on your car, mm -hmm. pick up either one of these: Grout's Garage Ultimate Premium Glass Cleaner or Meguiar's brand new Perfect Clarity. And I'm going to tell you this: cleaning the inside is almost more important than the outside. Yeah, it gets that film off the inside, which is just stuff. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but it needs to come off. It is oily generally. Right. You need a premium glass cleaner. And then remember, once you clean the glass. Be sure to wax it on the outside. One of the products you might want to use, I brought another sample here. We sell it. This is yes. Frank's own personal and, stash of it. And I just used it yesterday, coincidentally. I didn't even know what the topic was for today's show. And you used it. Yes. And what's your, give me a report on the wax. Well, my wife was very skeptical. She goes, what are you doing? And I says, just help me with this. You know, it was a beautiful yeah. day. We, let's, yeah. so let's go outside and do something. And we did the all the both cars. Uh, we did the, the windshield. And we did all. It does the go a fair long way. Yeah. Yes, and it. Uh, but uh, she loved the look and the performance. Isn't the bottle beautiful? There's some yes. that that. Aqua, and it smells great too. Yeah, it smells like Christmas. Cinnamon Christmas yeah. and bubble gum. And bubble gum. Yes. Yeah. But anyways, we liked the way it went out. We liked the way it came off, and it didn't leave a waxy film. And it has. It's a polymer, you know, synthetic type wax, mm -hmm. but it's really good on new cars. It's easy to use. It wipes right off. Yeah. It doesn't turn any of the plastics on cars that hazy white like the old type of waxes do. Right. It's great on windshields. It's great on everything. Mm -hmm. Good product. I liked it a lot. And we sell it at Crown Car Care. Yes, and I like the way the uh, the morning dew just beads up and rolls yes, away. Yes, it's wonderful. Yeah. Now, it doesn't last. I mean, it's not a forever thing. Right. I mean, every, we have to do it pretty, pretty odd, every right? couple months or a month. Yeah. Two other products I brought here. We'll get these out of the way. All right. We talked about cold weather. Mm -hmm. well, let me tell you what happens on cold weather with diesels. Wear happens on the injectors when the fuel gets cold, and wear happens to the injector pump. You need to be adding, if you own a diesel, especially in the cold weather, you need to be adding a cetane booster as well as a, a lubricant. Mm -hmm. A diesel fuel supplement is what most manufacturers call it. I sell this at my store in Palm City. It's made another fine product from Lucas. It's mm -hmm. made in America. It's an American-owned company. They're really, really a good company. And let me read this. Cetane Booster by Lucas contains effective lubricants for the engine's high-pressure fuel injection pump, reducing wear, and I test this by more than 27%. Mm. So a third. Nearly a third. It's a fabulous product. Mm -hmm. You'll notice better performance. It'll start better in the yeah. cooler or cold weather. Mm -hmm. It gives you better mileage, too. I'm a firm believer in it. I put my stamp on it. I use it in my own personal diesel truck. This is just good stuff. Lucas. Okay. Another fine Lucas. And I have another. Cetane power booster. But here's another additive mm -hmm. that is a fabulous additive. Um, you put it in the fuel. It's a multi system cleaner made by Lucas again. All right. There's the bottle. Another fine product. You can add this to diesel or gas, and it does a little different process. Mm -hmm. What it's doing is cleaning the valves and the, not the injectors, but the valves in the combustion chamber. In the fuel. And this isn't something you would do all the time. It would be something you'd want to add to a motor. And this bottle here, and when added to fuel, it cleans harmful deposits of intake valves, cylinder heads, lubricates the walls of the engine, as well as the compression rings and oil rings. This alone could extend greatly the life of your engine. And it can also increase mileage. It is a fabulous, fabulous product. They say you can add it to fuel. I don't think we should or do. I don't. I think that's stretching it. But putting it into the fuel is a great way to clean up the combustion chamber of your motor. Mm. It's really, really a good product. I would put half a bottle in at two Phillips. So this one bottle would last for one car and one diesel two times. You want to use it twice in a row. Put half the bottle in one Phillips, and then the next fill, put the other half of the bottle in. Mm -hmm. And you will notice 
really good improvements. It's a white, red, white, and blue bottle for America. Multi-system cleaner lubricant by Lucas. And where can you purchase these products? Crown Car Lucas? Care and Paul City. <laughs> Call us if you have any questions about the products at 772-781-8000. We're a, a, a vendor for the Lucas products, and we have the wax we talked about. We have the Cetane Booster, and we have an assortment of other products there by Lucas. We have a special rack in the waiting room supplied to us by Lucas. So, and if you see something that you've heard about and want, go on their website. We can get it for you at a great price, and you'll be supporting the local business, which would be Crown Car Care, family-owned. Nice. So there you have it. That's what I do. Support your local businesses. Yes. Let me get into the next thing because we're going to run out of time. I'm going to talk about what I was talking about in the show. Great quotes by great leaders. Okay. We, learn, we can learn a lot by great leaders, and here's why. They've walked the walk, haven't they? Mm -hmm. Their story of success is noted in all the history books, and it's noted in our culture as well as our lore of America, as well as the world. Mm -hmm. So by looking at them as examples and picking out some things that maybe that they have said about their lives mm -hmm. or the lives that they of other people around them, I think we can learn quite a bit. And the first uh, person we're going to talk about is Teddy Roosevelt. Yes. Teddy Roosevelt was a younger relative of Theodore Roosevelt. Or not Theodore, but uh, Franklin Roosevelt, F.D. Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me read a little bit about Theodore Roosevelt. He was a very uh, rugged, uh, strong individual that was actually very sickly. Mm. And that's all I'll say on it. He, he fought illnesses his whole life, yet he overcame it. He had an enormous amount of energy and zest for America. And uh, he was one of the rough riders in the Spanish-American War. Mm -hmm. And in fact, as he returned from the war, he uh, was elected to the governor of New York hmm. prior to his uh, run into the uh, political offices of the uh, executive branch of the United States federal government, hmm. which would be the president and vice president. He was the vice president for McKinley. And you know what happened in 1901? Mr. McKinley was assassinated. Yeah. And then, of course, Theodore Roosevelt, as the vice president, took right over in 1901. Mm -hmm. He also had uh, run his re-election term, so he was with us for... Uh, until 2009, or I mean not 2009, but uh, nine years after, or eight years after 1901. Right. Mm -hmm. so, 1909. 909. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One year was already taken up with McKinley in office. Right. Okay. He won American Nobel Peace Prize in 1906. Mm -hmm. For what do you think? Mediating the end of the Russian-Japanese War. Something I'm not familiar with. Right. Most people in American history wouldn't know that. Yeah. That's he right. was a devoted naturalist. He mm -hmm. is considered the father of all the national parks. He set aside thousands and thousands of acres that have now been established at our national park system. He didn't establish the park system, but he set aside the land. Right. So he's the father of it. Right. Theodore Roosevelt. He was also best friends or good friends with a man named John Muir. If any of you out there are naturalists, you'll know John Muir. He's from California. Noted naturalist that was uh, lived uh, out there in the uh, northern part of California. Mm. In fact, there's Muir Woods, famous yes. place, Muir Woods. It was named after John Muir. Not too far from the Redwood Forest, I would think. That is correct. I've been there. I've been to the Redwood Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's, I'm going to give two quotes yeah. from Teddy and then we'll move on. Yeah. We're going to go into the two examples of Crown Park here. Which okay. And I, he has a whole assortment of ones, but I'm going to pick one of them I feel that's really good. So we all know, he said, it's hard to fail, as in you don't like it. Mm -hmm. But it is worse to never have tried to succeed. There you go. All right. That's good. It's better to try and fail than not to try at all. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And here's another great quote. There you go. And I like this one because it has to do with business. People ask the difference between a leader and a boss. The leader leads... And the boss drives. Hmm. Isn't that good? Yeah. It's better to be a leader than a driver. Yeah. Because a driver, you have to push people. Yeah. It's better to lead and let them come to you as well as to the new ideas that you're trying to promote in your business and have them embrace them. Theodore Roosevelt coined that back in what, 1900s? Yeah. Long before all the management, talking, speaking heads that we have with master's degrees in business now today. Right. Very good. Those are my two. Oh, his last one, famous one, speak softly and carry a big, big stick. stick. Yeah. And, you know, that was from his policy in uh, South, South America. I think he was also known for saying, bully for you. Yes, he was. All right. And we'll be right back, so stick with us.
Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so we clean glass. We did the presidents. Shut down there. And we're going to talk about the two cars that came in your shop. Right? Yep, and then we should hit it. Yeah, I thought that was pretty neat. I spent a hundred dollars for a a storage unit. We bought it sight on scene. How long did it? They, they bought it in eighty nine, but when did they open it? It was a blind oh, right after. Well, shortly. Oh, after. so this is an old story made new. Yeah, I guess they just were talking about it because of the truck and yeah, everything yeah, with yeah. Elon Musk. Yeah. And he was a silent buyer. He was. He when did he know buy who it? it? Was in two thousand thirteen. Yes. Oh, what so that would, that's how he got that car. He snapped it up. And you no, he used a design, that wedge design. It looks just like a Lotus. He said it. it looked, all the early folks when during the unveiling said they reminded him of the Mad Max. Yeah. Well, I think it looks. Uh, Did you hear I the story know. of the McLaren? <clears throat> Do you know who Trevor Bauer is, the pitcher for Texas? No. no. It looks apocalyptic. On Thanksgiving, yes. this one is a good story. Um, his McLaren was at the dealership. Uh -huh. This is a baseball player in Texas and Houston. And he said, I'm thankful no one was hurt when this semi-truck tire came loose on the freeway, crossed six lanes of traffic, launched over two rows of cars, and smashed my McLaren 650S while it was at the dealership. My dad had that happen to him with the tire. I mean, <laughs> Can you like know Mustang I mean, convertible tire rolling down the road hit his roof and smashed his windshield. Picture. Look at that! Yikes! Oh, I mean, it, I mean, this is like a real. I mean, it went oh, wow. across. And it, I mean, that's crazy. Whoa. So weird. That's funny. It happened to your dad. Yes. Ten seconds. I'll save this for next week. Well, I'll get my mom to call next week. Three seconds. Two. One. Welcome back. So, Tom, are you going to tell us about... Well, first of all, I'm going to ask if there's a listener out there. I know my mom is listening uh, to our show. I'd like her to call if she can next week and talk about my dad when the spare, the tire went rolling down the road and, and hit the top of the Mustang in, in the windshield. It's a great story. She'll call next week if I know she will. All right. So, very good. All right. Let me talk about two stories, and they're very good stories. We've had a car or a truck, a medium-duty Chevy truck, that has been experiencing repeat caliper failure on the right side of the vehicle. Okay. And we've put on several calipers and, and sometimes you just, until you get the solution, you can only go with what you go with right. to get to the solution that you want. And a lot of times you have to fail. Well, this, you have to fail once like mm -hmm. we did mm -hmm. to get to the solution, which ultimately I tip my hat off to our fine gentleman in our service department in Palm City, this, uh, and his name is Ron. He's worked with me for five years, and we were doing this now, uh, caliper, which would be uh, the second time they got it. Mm -hmm. and the first time it failed, it overheated, and it caused failure on the highway. Oof. Came back, I mean, nothing. It just was sticking, of course, and causing premature brake wear and high heat. So. All right. This happened, and we uh, received another caliper, and we were putting it on. And by chance, Ron was looking at the caliper and the line that attaches to it, and he just—he was looking at the bolt that attaches to it. It's called they call a banjo fitting with a bolt, and the bolt's hollow. It's, it's a hardened bolt that has holes drilled in it through the center the center line of the bolt, as well as ports that come out. And that's so the brake fluid can flow into the caliper when you press the brake pedal. Okay. Pressure. But what, uh, I don't know, and he doesn't know why he did it, but he did it. And, and I, I say all my technicians do that. We look broad to see what we can see when we're doing a repair or a service, because you never know what you're going to find. And many times I can tell story after story of us finding things that are critical not only to the car but maybe to the repair and we only found it by using what i preach and teach that you have to look beyond the part you're looking at and look at the whole car as a whole object and you find things well this small bolt that does not come with the caliper so it's reusable 
he took it and looked at it. And inside the hollow of that bolt was a piece of a rag. Very well could have been there since it was new. Soaked with brake fluid, blocking one of the ports for the bolt. And what was happening on this caliber was is the high pressure of the brake fluid was pushing through the shop rag. It's like a semi-permeable membrane, allowing pressure to go to the brakes. But when the brake pedal was released, it was not allowing it to go back out. Very similar to what we were talking about with the wind going in a car. It, the high pressure pushed out the fluid, and it worked fine on the pressure side. But when you release the brake pedal, it's the over, the square cut O-ring that's inside the brake caliper that causes the piston to retract. And if there's a slight bit of, very slight bit of 5 to 10 PSI, which is nothing, inside that caliper and there was because of this rag inside the bolt it yeah. was blocking it so it was allowing it to go in but not to come out it was causing the failure and we would not have found that had it not been one of the policies that i preach at one of her businesses is look beyond the repair look at everything and ron great job ron ron found that yeah and i told him it was a moment in time that he he crossed the line of Greatness. Mm -hmm. And then when you do that and you Into, find that, yes. it yes. not only is it a boost for our shop, but it's a boost personally because when you do that, I know that you've reached the pinnacle. You've reached that point in your career as well as at Crown Car Care that I now know that you can do it at any level. Right. Because finding that, I didn't find it. I wasn't really involved in the repair, but I always look at all the cars mm -hmm. and he found it. And that would be something that's that, very cool uh, I, I just it's a great story yeah. and it's more of a story that he uh, broke through that's a barrier that you break through as a technician when you find those things that nobody else finds because your mindset and the way you work is different than everybody else and i will tell you at crown car care that's what we are different different in a good way mm -hmm. and this is a perfect example of it and i'm going to talk about another example of crown car care and it happened on friday it was the day after thanksgiving we were open for business and we're right near the turnpike in Palm City off 714. And we had a trapper come in with their son from Miami. And when they came in, their car broke down. Did their car break down the highway? Or no, they started, they, they noticed they noticed a heavy vibration in the car and they noticed that the transmission wasn't shifting right. And I'll tell you what it was a 2013 Nissan Rogue. Those particular cars have a CVT transmission, and for what it's worth, CVT transmissions work great when they work, but when they don't work, it's disastrous. Uh -huh. It's a steel band, that the way they, they don't have gears, they work off a variable displacement hub assembly that changes the ratio con continually through a, a solenoid that varies the hub diameter, just like on a snowmobile, a go kart, things like that. There's no gears, but it accelerates with power and then as you get to high rate speed that belt actually expands so it, it allows it to be in a higher gear like overdrive if it was so they found you off the they highway. found me mm -hmm. and, and they came because in we're the, located very close to the turnpike. yeah and here's the story on it they again family in a strange town strange world and they were i could see they were upset because they were taking their son uh on, they were on Thanksgiving break. They were taking their son as a gift uh, treat to take him to Tampa to go to um, Bush, Gardens. Bush Gardens. So that's where they were heading to. Mm -hmm. And the lady, she works for Baxter. It's a pharmaceutical company. She works in the credit area with the, their credit union. And, and um, she had bought the car used from the place she worked. The bank got the loan on it. And uh, one of the things that she told me was that... Uh, and she didn't tell me really until after I had diagnosed the car that it needed a transmission. Unfortunately, when these CVTs do what they do, in this particular case, the transmission was failed and it was going to need another one. And the actual shaft, the boot, had completely split on it, threw all the grease out and caused a heavy vibration in one of the axle shafts going out to the drive wheel of the car. Well, I looked at the vehicle and I told them what I could with on, on the upside of it, but there really was nothing but bad news to give them. And she told me that she had an extended warranty, and I was a little bit skeptical. So I took a look at it. I read it carefully, and she says, what are you doing? I said, I have to read this to find out all the information on it. So if there's anything I can help you with, I'm going to know what I'm talking about. 
So she respected that, right? And then I sat and read it. It took me about 10 minutes to read through it. And I realized that it wasn't a bad policy. In fact, it was one of the better policies I'd ever read in my life. I quickly put together an estimate, got all the prices, crossed my fingers, and I had Paul, my fabulous service manager there. He called the extended warranty on Friday. Most people, you know, are off. Most places are closed, but this place was open. And we told him what we had gotten, and it needed about uh, $7,000 worth of work. Good As you job. know, when you do an extended warranty, I'll tell you right now, they usually send an adjuster out to do an inspection, and it's usually like pulling teeth sometimes to get big repairs done. Right. They approved everything, nice. sight unseen, for this lady. And not only that, but she had rental car. She got a rental car for a week, which I set up. I immediately then called Enterprise Rental Car, and they delivered the car right to them so they could get to Tampa. I, I couldn't believe. And they got $500 spending money over the weekend because they had an incident where their car broke down. Can you believe that? I honestly going to wow. this thing played out like it was something that Santa Claus was bringing us. Right, that was well, right? very does. But yeah. I will tell you, it really came to play because of the great people at Crown Car Care. Mm. I would argue that if that vehicle had gone anywhere else, I don't think it would have quite played out like that. Yeah. In fact, all day today we've been working on it in contact with the customer mm -hmm. as they're getting they were driving back from Tampa. Mm -hmm. In a rented car that was paid for by this extended warranty, and Crown Car Care pumps and these do no repairs. Sweet. And I have a man delivering it to their door in Miami. A friend of mine owns a transport company at no charge. He's delivering the car down to them. Wow! Isn't that sweet? That is. So awesome. we made their day. We made their weekend, and so that's the way it works. Do good in the world, and the world will do good to you. There it is. So I think it's about time to go, isn't it? Well, we got a little. About a minute. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you a couple more things. I'm going to talk about floor mats. Tamara, tell me about the floor mats in your Ford Explorer that maybe it's a good Christmas gift for somebody. Oh, I love my floor mats. And what's so special about those floor mats compared to other ones? They're just easier to clean. Well, what about the shape of them? They mold into your car. Ah. Mm -hmm. With technology and lasers, they're able to take existing you know, car platforms and they laser them and measure them for an exact fit and they make a molded floor mat. Husky. What do they call it? Husky. husky. Those are husky. Mm -hmm. They're very valuable. Good value line. Weather Tech is also another company, a little bit more expensive. If you're looking for a great gift for somebody, come to see Crown Car Care. We can facilitate and help you get them. I don't have them in stock. We have to order them, but you know what? We'll get you a set at a good price, and it's local. All, all good things. And they can reach you at 772-781-8000. And we've got, what, three, three weeks to Christmas. That's right. Can't wait. <laughs> next week we'll have we had Santa Claus call today and let's have a good no have another good show next week. Exactly Thank you. right. Thank Everyone, you. good night. Anything on the sheriff's department for driving those vehicles? No. I'll call it up in there. Yeah, I'm gonna get that. And then, oh, Thank take you. this number. This is the number that's doing our podcast. I think you guys might have some questions for us. Take that card and follow him. Is that right? Is that right? I have not followed up with him. The what? Well, I mean, I have his. I have that email you sent me. I just haven't. Yes, really well, that's his direct line contact number. So, okay. all right. So before you leave, what are we going to call this? Yeah. This is the Santa Claus episode. Okay. Okay. Visit with Santa. And a clean wipe. No. No, that's, you might get good searches. No. <laughs> God, that's awful. <laughs> what? Clean glass wipe. Yeah, yeah. clean glass wipe. My friend has twins, and when they were babies, like she took a video of them, like they were like kissing each other, and she put on and their boy girl twin, and she put, she put on um, YouTube twins kissing, and she had like hundreds of thousands of views. Really?